who is God to you? Who is God to you? I remember a story uh, as a, you know, in elementary school, we read in one of our readings uh, of four blind men uh, trying to brought, they brought, a, brought them to where an elephant is and they wanted to wanted them to feel the elephant and describe the elephant so uh you know according to how they sensed him with your hands one was standing behind so the first thing he touched was like a, a was the tail and he said oh an elephant is like a tree eh, sorry like a rope it's like a rope so an elephant is like a rope another person stood by um the side and he touched the side of the elephant's uh, body and he said wow the elephant is wide like a wall another person touched the the the, the legs and he said oh an elephant is like a tree you know round big like a tree and the fourth person touched the trunk and he said oh the elephant is wobbly you know it has like a, a you know describe how the trunk was and uh, each of them described uh, an elephant according to their perception, but none of them got the full picture of what an elephant is. Now, understanding and insight enables us to know God. Many of us relate to God like the blind people relating to an elephant. And this is the reason why God has taken it upon himself to always... Um, introduce himself and so that people do not misunderstand him god is so wide is so big he's so deep that no human mind can comprehend him truly this is the reason why he has given us his spirit so that his spirit can reveal he, he him that is the holy spirit and reveal God to our spirits. So it is our spirits that really understands God. That is why um, when you hear believers talk about God and relate with God, it's different from when somebody, uh, the, the way somebody who has yet to be a believer uh, relates and describes God. And this is why God invited every one of us to, um, to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, because through Jesus Christ, the blindness is taken away from because of uh, blindness that resulted from sin is removed and our sight is restored and sight is restored. And when sight is restored, you won't be touching the elephant by the tail thinking it's a snake or rope or, you know, describing him based on your perception. You will have a wider, a bigger, a, a, a better understanding of God because your spirit will be made to come alive and because your spirit is made to come alive you are able to see him for who he is God God I mean and and now you are able to relate with him the way he designed you to relate with him I want you to know something that you were created for the joy of God we are humanity we are all created for for the joy of God, for the pleasure of God. Roman, uh, Revelations, I think chapter 4, verse 11, he said, for he has created all things for his pleasure, all things. God wants to enjoy you. God wants to be part of your life. He wants you to be part of his. He wants you to enjoy him. It's a family man. God is a family man. And we are his children. And when someone comes to faith through the Lord Jesus Christ, you are given access to him. He gives you access to himself. He reveals himself to you. And by revealing himself to you, you have a better understanding, a growing understanding, a growing knowledge. As you pursue to know him, he reveals himself um, deeper and deeper to you. I want you to know something. A lot of people still today uh, relate with God in various ways, like the blind people. And that is what I am hoping to by this uh, sharing of the word to bring us to a place where we can have our eyes open so that we can see this big elephant for who he really is. I'm saying elephant 
using the analogy of the, 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 the story I told you of my elementary school reading. This great God, this great God that covers the whole earth, that owns the, the universe, all right? Let's see how he introduced himself. He introduced himself in the book of uh, Exodus here, Exodus chapter 34. If you can come with me, I would like to read it from the amplified, uh, sorry, from the King James Version. And let us look at it from verse um, 6 and 7, Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 34, 6 and 7. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Isn't this amazing? This great God, this all-conquering almighty, all-powerful, all-wise God introduce himself in such humble way. This is truly who he is in his heart. He is full of mercy, merciful. He is full of mercy. He is gracious. He is gracious. He is long-suffering and abundant in goodness and, and truth. There is no lie in him. There is no deception in him. There is no wickedness in him. There is no evil in him. That's how he introduced himself to Moses in Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 and 7. Now he says, keeping covenant. Look at it, verse 7. Keeping mercy for thousands. All right. Ver verse 7 from my translation says, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiven iniquity and transgressions and sins. And that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and the fourth generation. The Lord is saying, though he is soft, he is tender, gracious, and merciful, full of goodness and truth at heart, yet he, that does not mean that he will uh, allow a continued or con uh, yeah, a progressive iniquity to go unpunished. So in other words, when you realize that you are on the wrong side, he wants you to turn so that you can be a partaker of the mercy that he says in verse seven, keeping mercy for, a thousand, for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sins. So when you repent, there's forgiveness. That's what he says. He says, this is me. This is me. This is who I am. This is what, how I, I live. This is my life. This is my nature. My nature is, I am full of mercy. I'm gracious. I suffer long. In other words, I can wait for a long time. And I can be with you for a long time. And I'm abundant in goodness and truth. That is who he is. That is who he introduced himself as to Moses. That is how his self-revelation, introduction to Moses. Many of us know him as the Almighty. Many of us relate with him as somebody who, if you mess up, is going to whack your head. You know, he's going to strike you and punish you. Somebody who is vengeful. Some people look at him and describe him in many ways. When you hear people describe him the wrong way, it's because they are still blind. Stand like the picture of the blind, four blind people before an elephant. Their conception, their perception is wrong. Why? Because their spiritually, um, spiritual eyes are darkened, are blind, and their hearts are dead. Their spirit is dead. They cannot receive the revelation of God. They cannot receive from God. Let's see what David said about this same God in the book of Psalm, uh, chapter 145. Psalm, chapter 145. Let's look at it together, please. And let us see verse uh, 8 and 9. Psalm eight, uh, 145, verse 8 and 9. He said, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Slow to anger. He doesn't wear his heart in his sleeve. Slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all. He's good to all. He's good to all. He's good to all. You know, sometimes we say, okay, this person's so evil. Why is he still alive? 
I wish this will happen. I wish that will happen. And the things that we are wishing will happen, God is saying, no, that's not, you don't reflect my heart because I'm good to all. He's the creator of all humans. He loves all humans. And as well as all other creations of his too, you know, but he loves all humans and he's good to all humans. He's actually good to the person that you think is the worst of them all. God is good to all. And the Bible says, and his tender mercies, verse 9, are over all his works. So he shows mercy. He cushions people with his mercy. He covers people with his mercy. He spills his mercy so people can walk on it, you know, so that you are all surrounded. We are all surrounded with the, by the mercy of God. That is his nature. That is his nature. That, that is what the Bible says. Book of Psalm 145, verse 8 and 9. The Lord is gracious. Let's see another place here in Ezekiel. Hmm. Come with me to the book of Ezekiel chapter 33 and let us see uh, the mercy of God in a in a different way. Oh, this is this is amazing. I I I am so look at look at what God said. Let's look at it from verse 8. This is this is God's mercy. Verse 8. He says, When I say to the wicked, the wicked is somebody who wants to live his own way, who does not regard God who lives the way he wants, does not believe in Jesus, he's not saved, he has not admitted that he's a sinner and, that, and he needs help, he still feels that he, he's got steam to live on, so he's running on his own steam, you know. Um, uh, the Bible says in verse 8, when I, this is God speaking, God speaking to prophet Ezekiel, he said, when I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not warn, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. So you see that his mercy is extended to the wicked. He doesn't want the wicked to die in his wickedness. Isn't that ho hopeful for you? In case you have not yet uh, accepted Jesus and you think that, uh, or you have not believed in God, you've not come to faith in God through the Lord Jesus Christ. You think that, oh, all is well. Maybe, I want to remind you that it is the mercy of God that you are living on. And it is the mercy of God that I, that has already believed in Jesus that I'm living on too. You see, that mercy is extended to us equally. And I want to encourage you to please seize that opportunity and make a turn. Come join the family of God, and let us love on one another and pursue God together. All right, I'm going to take you down to verse 10. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. And today, I am the son of man speaking to you, my brother. You may not be of the house of Israel. You might be wherever you come from around the world, but I am quoting his word, and his word is relevant to me too. And as I'm reading it, it's also speaking to me. So he says, Therefore, O thou son of man, speak to the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sin be upon us, and we pine away, how should we then live? All right? This is what they're saying. This is what the sinners is saying. The house of Israel that sinned, and today may be you that has sinned. I sinned too, and I used to say the same thing. But I have repented, and the Lord knows I have, and it is your turn to repent, you know. And that, But this is what they are saying. He's saying, well, we are pining away because of our sins. Essentially, that's what he's saying. So how, where is the hope for life? But look at verse 11. Say unto them, as I live, as I live, as I live, say, 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 um, Follow me, please, to verse uh, um, 11. This is, this is so good. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins are upon us, and we pine away, then how shall we then live? Verse 11 says, Say unto them, As I live, said the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death, in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. I have no pleasure 
in the death of the wicked. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked should turn from his wickedness and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? God is encouraging and saying, turn, turn from your sin so you can live. Because living, um, dying, living in sin leads to spiritual death. And he's saying, I do not want you to die because of your sins. I don't want you to die in your sins. So turn. He said, turn. Why do you want to die? Why do you want to suffer? Why do you want to go on living in spiritual de uh, death? Why do you want to, even physical death, God does not want us to die. Look at this. Look at verse 12. Therefore thou son of man, say to the children of Israel, see to the children of thy people. Isn't this, a, isn't this a amazing? It says, say to the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgressions, as the wickedness of the wicked shall not fall thereby. Let me reread that. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgressions. In other words, if you've been righteous and then all of a sudden you fall back, you cannot accumulate your accumulation, the accumulation of your righteousness, previous righteous works, righteous lifestyle. It's not going to deliver you today because you have turned from righteousness unto unrighteousness. But now look at this. As for the wicked, as for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. Isn't God gracious? This is the gracious God that we, he, as the way he introduced himself. This is that grace speaking to us today. In other words, if you're righteous and you go back into sin, your righteousness will not deliver you. It's useless to you. And if you've been a sinner, but now you have turned, all the sins you've committed before will not, you will not suffer the consequences today. That's what he's saying. He's saying here, he said, yeah, neither shall the, uh, look at it, look at it. He said, as for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turns from his wickedness, the day that he turneth or turns from his wickedness. So the moment you turn from your wickedness, you are brought, you are given the opportunity to live. Now, look at verse 13. When I say to the righteous, he shall surely live, if he trusts in his own righteousness and committeth iniquity, and all, he say, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for the iniquity he had committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walked in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. And none of his sin that he had committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. <laughs> oh, my goodness. See how gracious God is. See how kind God is. He said, when I turn, I shall live. That's what he's saying to you. When you turn, when we turn from wickedness, we shall live. When we turn from stealing, robbing, and we restore, and we do the right thing, and we apply the law of God, the law that leads to life, the law, the perfect law of liberty, like the, the, the Bible describes it, all right? When we live by the law of God, the word of God, the Bible says that we shall live. We shall live. He said the, our wickedness that we have committed in the past shall not be remembered. If I were you, I, I will seize this opportunity because I have seized it myself, okay? I have taken it and I'm going to keep living the righteous life, the life of faith. And God, seeing your heart, knowing your heart, 
sees my heart, knows my heart. He sees how sincere I am, how sincere you are. It, this is our opportunity. And I want to invite you to join me in this golden opportunity. Let's seize it and turn from our wickedness and turn to the living God and enjoy his mercy. He's eagerly waiting to wipe away our sins. And in fact, in Christ Jesus, he has already wiped away our sins. So what we got to do is to come now and receive the forgiveness that he has offered us in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God that I, I, he has asked me to share with you. And I want you to know something. God is not what you thought you knew. He is full of mercy, full of compassion. He's abundant in goodness and in truth. And he says he's long-suffering and he's forgiving. God is forgiven. Let's seize that opportunity and let us use it. I want to pray with you. Heavenly Father, I come with my brother. I come with my sister. I come with whoever is listening to the sound of my voice this beautiful day. And I bring, I stand with them in my heart by faith, saying, Lord, we need your mercy. We need your mercy. We repent of all our wickedness. We admit that we have been wicked. We have lived for ourselves. We have lived for, or for our own pleasure, neglected you, forgotten about you. But, Father, today we want to seize the golden opportunity you have presented to us. We are turning from our wickedness now, and we are asking you to forgive us, and we are asking you, Lord, to give us a new heart and a new mind that will long for you, that we pursue you in the name of Jesus. And as you say this prayer with me, and you now, I want to encourage you to yield your heart to the Lordship of Jesus. Say, Jesus, I yield my heart to your Lordship. Today, I declare you Lord over my life. My going out, my coming in, my sitting, my rising, my sleeping moment, and uh, the, every moment I'm awake, every breath that I take, I want you to be Lord over my life. And from now, as you do that, tell him you believe that he resurrected, he was brought back to life from the dead, all right? Be okay. Say, say, I confess you as Lord of my life, and I believe you're the Son of God, and I believe you were raised for my justification. That's it. As you do that, you are going to see that salvation will swoop. God is so eager with his grace. He's been waiting to swoop you in and love on you and forgive you and remove that weight of sin and the guilt of sin. The sin consciousness is being taken away from you this moment, even as you're hearing my voice in the name of Jesus. And now what I want you to do is you see the, uh, our contact information here below and please go ahead and con <clears throat> contact us and see how we can help you to grow in your faith but remember your father is merciful in case you slip and you fall get up and ask for mercy he understands he's merciful he's compassionate amen he will forgive you he will help you he will, as he's helping me he will heal your body he will meet every need in your life as he, as he meets my need as well. Whatever I'm sharing with you, these are things that I am experiencing. I'm experiencing the mercy of God on a daily basis. I'm experiencing the compassion of God, the long suffering of God, the, the generosity of God, the gracious nature of God. I'm enjoying it on a daily basis. Every day I wake up and I say, Lord, thank you for what you, who you are and who you are to me. You are gracious and full of compassion and of tender mercies. Amen. All right. I look, I look forward to hearing from you and I look forward to uh, embarking on this journey of faith side by side with you. Uh, if you have questions, if you have struggles, if you need healing, if you need any kind of uh, uh, help in any way, family, whatever, please feel free to contact us. And if you are local around where uh, any of our churches are, or uh, please join us. And then on the other hand, too, if you want to join us virtually every meeting, Wednesday meeting, Bible study, or join us on Sundays for our Sunday service, which are uh, God, we've been experiencing God's power so much. Every meeting, we're the full of testimonies 
testimonies as to the gracious nature and the merciful nature of our Heavenly Father. If you want to be a partaker, look at our contact information below, and we look forward to having you. God bless you. Until I come your way again, love from Jerry Samuels.